Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. T1 Glistenralf here, here with a uh, quick little deck tech of mine. My own invention for standard. I don't get into standard too often, but when I do, I do something silly. Present to you Mono Blue Turbo Fog. Now, let's get started, right? The very beginning of it. <laughs> fogs. All of these fogs you're going to see are not actual fogs. They're off-brand fogs, as I like to think of them. This is Whelming Wave just bounces them all to hand. Not a true fog effect, but it might as well be for our purposes. Next, we have the card Aether Spouts at 5 mana. Again, instead of actually fogging, instead of actually preventing damage, we're going to return them to the top or bottom of the deck. And that actually becomes pretty crucial in just a bit. You'll see shortly. This is Cryptic Command, except it's not. You know how people like to say that Contradict is Cryptic Command with the two modes they already use most, and just one more mana? Uh, this is Cryptic Command with two other modes. Draw a card, and instead of tapping them down, we're minus four, minus O, oh, and again, five mana. Um, you aren't great, but you know what's even worse than that? No, it's fine, it's fine. Icy Blast. This I only run two of. The others are four, this I only run two, and actually, if I had all the cards I'd want, I don't even need that many. So collectively, these are my fogs. Uh, four Whelming Wave, four Aether Spouts, four Blinding Sprays, and two Icy Blasts. And you'll see the deck list in the description below as well. Next, you know, if you're going to run a fog deck, uh, you can't just pile in a bunch of fogs, you also have to have some means of drawing the cards. And thankfully, this standard happens to have all of the tools that we need to run a fog deck of this sort. Back when that was a thing during uh, Innistrad to return to Ravnica blocks, like those blocks in standard, you had, uh, I believe it was called Otherworldly Atlas. Well, in this case, oh, we have our Howling Mine. We have Howling Mine for this standard. Um, it has Flash. That way you can give yourself that draw first. That means we're not really going to try to, like, draw our opponent out of the game? Well, we are, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Just, just a moment. Be to that sooner. Getting a little bit ahead of myself. So, four Dictates of Crucifix. Um, probably the most important card as far as actually trying to get fogs every turn. <laughs> Minimal mana investment for how many cards you're going to get. Then we have four Anticipates. Useful selection. Next we have I only have uh, three dig through times. The deck should be running four. I only have three, so it only yeah. But but yes, you will definitely want to run four of these, without a doubt. Again, a very crucial card, especially in the late game. You can just run into your answers once you have the the board pretty much locked up. Uh, four treasure cruises. One of these should be a dig through time. So yeah. Oh. Let's get that up for you. Actually, you all know what Treasure Cruise is. <laughs> Pretty sure. Now, as far as utility goes, right now, I actually don't do very much of it. Uh, for better or for worse, I don't run too many counter spells. At least not in the current build. I'm probably going to go up one more, but for right now, I have two dissolves. And that's really it. Feel free to disagree with me. I won't blame you at all. But just two. Now let's get into win conditions. We're a silly deck. We're gonna play Grind Clock. <laughs> uh, there's certainly more than one way to do this. The reason that I prefer Grind Clock is because it makes our match against the control decks that seem to be everywhere super, super good. Um, it also, we have plenty of time, they can't really interact with that very much. You can't Heroes Downfall Grind Clock, you can't kill it with this, that, or the other. A lot of the the answers to creatures, because creatures are everywhere in the format, right? A lot of the answers to creatures don't really do anything to Grind Clock. The downside, y it is very, very slow. Also, um, you might want to brush up on your math, <laughs> on your calculus, before you start playing this card. Actually, I'm, j I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to get it exactly right, so instead of saying it, I'm going to put the formula on top of the screen, or on the top, you know what I mean, on screen. And that's the formula that you need to use in order to decide how many charge counters are appropriate. 
but <laughs> that formula, as I've learned, is actually very, very simplified. And what I mean by that is this. Uh, that's with one grind clock and one draw a turn. You can get multiple grind clocks and multiple draws a turn. So it actually changes. Uh, if, you, if you don't really want to do the math, uh, get some experience with the deck. Uh, goldfish for a while and actually work out, okay, with X and Y, with X grind clocks and Y draws per turn, it will take this many charge counters and so on and so forth. Um, but this is a very, it's a surprisingly skill-intensive card if you're trying to optimize its use. But a lot of times against mid-range decks, you don't have to. You can actually just sit behind it and, you know, you, you can afford to be a little bit suboptimal because you're locking them down so well. And then there's the one of Ugin. Again, I only have one Ugin, otherwise this would go in for another Icy Blast. I would be running 13 Fogs and effectively six win conditions in the main board. Ugin is a workhorse. Ugin is a beast. Um, it's quite alright if you tap out most of the time with Ugin, because you're going to minus X, you're going to wipe their board, and they're going to have to rebuild, and then you can untap. And then you can use your fog spells to keep protecting your Ugin until you win the game from there. Ugin is a workhorse. And then lastly for the main board, uh, I'm going to start with, I'm going to give you the lands. Two fetch lands. I used to have three. Frankly, this should have quite a few more. I don't know if you go up to the full eight, but you're going to want fetch lands. You're going to want to fuel your delve spells. And these are how we do it. And also, of course, just in the late game, um, to thin your deck so that you're more likely to hit the fogs themselves. Once you have eight lands, you have all you're probably going to need. Unless your opponent is countering your fogs, in which case you might need, you know, nine or ten so that you can double up on Whelming Wave and Aether Spouts or whatnot. For the most part, that's it. And then 22 other islands. <laughs> lots and lots of islands. Wonder what that's supposed to be. Ha! Uh, I'm 13, apparently. No, 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 no. So, 24 lands altogether. Uh, you want more fetches. You want a second Ugin in place of Icy Blast. The, the other Icy Blast... <laughs> poor Icy Blast, I'm just hitting on it. Uh, it's The other Icy Blast can go in for another... Dis or go out for another Dissolve. That's perfectly fine. Probably what you should do, actually. And now for the sideboard that I have right now. So your match is already fairly strong against uh, the blue-black control decks and the Esper Dragon control decks, but let's make it even better with four Disdainful Strokes. Just counter their win conditions. They actually don't have very many, and bear in mind that most of them are going to be pretty big. Uh, we're talking their big dragons, for instance, or their Ugin. And Disdainful Stroke can just be held back, sandbagged, uh, to play against those, in addition to the counter spells you already have. I also have two Icy Blasts. As much as I don't like that card, it's, it sounds like I really don't like that card. You're a very slow deck. This deck is premised on the assumption that we just don't respect the speed of this standard at all. Uh, however, you will come across Mono Red, or the Atarka Aggro deck, or Gruel Aggro, um, and that deck will wreck you if, you if you don't have anything that you're doing in the early turns. Icy Blast is a fog that can hit them right off the bat. Um, you really, you really should consider putting some of these in the sideboard at least to deal with the faster decks. Next, I have three negates. Uh, some number of those maybe should be gainsay. Um, I would certainly understand that to go in against again the control decks to shore them up. Even with what I have right now, though, I have actually never lost a game against the blue-black control deck. Um, and I haven't gotten the chance to try against the Esper like dragon control deck and whatnot. Unfortunately, in a competitive event, I haven't actually gotten the chance to play against them, so I haven't gotten those on camera, and I apologize for that. Uh, next, we have one Divination, and I'm going to go right ahead and put these out as well. Three Jace's Ingenuities. Uh, we want the draw spells I, well, look, let me let me start with the ingenuity. Actually, ingenuity is again for the control deck. You want to be able to outvalue them. Uh, 
as far as you as far as you care, you don't need your icy blast. You don't need blinding spray. You need whelming wave and ether spouts, and you need to draw into them a lot. Uh, you also have plenty of time to set up, so they're not going to be hitting you until they're hitting you with a six mana dragon or a seven mana so on and so forth, or an eight mana planeswalker. So on turn five, it's perfectly acceptable for you to go crazy with drawing cards. Or wait till they can't cast their dragons anymore, that is, the end of their turn, and then draw stuff. Uh, the Divination, however, is a draw spell for when, again, the game isn't going to go for quite as long. Divination I put in against the mid-range decks, Jace's Ingenuity I bring in against the control decks. Uh, neither one goes in against the decks that are just, just hitting you with a really fast clock. Uh, next, no, notice there are zero creatures here so far. I am very much a fan of playing magic with zero creatures. <laughs> I, I, I like old school magic like that. Uh, but, but, we do want to make use of the fact that they're probably citing out their creature kill. If they saw Ugin, they, may not, they might not cite out Downfall. But they're citing out ultimate price, they're citing out uh, direct damage. Well, I don't know, no. They're citing out any damage that would hit creatures, at least. And so we side in Stormtide Leviathan. Do not side this in against decks that absolutely rely on flyers, flyers, and more flyers. I don't bring that in against control. I bring that in against the aggro decks to keep them from attacking anymore. Same thing with the mid-range decks where they're only going to have a few flyers, preferably, hopefully. And we might be able to discounter them on the way down. Uh, Stormtide Leviathan is actually a fairly quick clock. Give them three turns, and if they're fetching a lot, maybe not even three. And you're good. Uh, you're set with Stormtide. If I'm sighting out my grind clocks, I'm sighting in Stormtide Leviathan. Uh, they bring in Artifact Hate, I have zero artifacts left. I'm just silly like that. And then lastly but not least, well, sometimes this feels like it's least, Vortex Elemental. What on earth am I doing with this thing? Uh, the card Siege Rhino is surprisingly good <laughs> against this deck. And the reason is because we're not using actual fogs, we're using off-brand fogs. Specifically, Whelming Wave and Aether Spouts. Both of them uh, actually make Siege Rhino all the better. If I return it to hand, they just play Siege Rhino and drain me for three again. If I return it to the top of, or return it to the deck, but let's face it, the top of the deck, they play it again. I have gotten people by grinding them, uh, they return their Siege Rhino or whatnot to the top of the deck, and then I use Grind Clock to get rid of it. Um, and that's, that's okay, that's kind of cute, but uh, you actually just want to get rid of them entirely. So Vortex Elemental comes in for that. Just when they attack, block, and put it back in their library. And maybe you can grind it away at some later date. Um, get Vortex Elemental back, do it again. Uh, you have plenty of draw power, so you might actually be able to. And just loop it until, uh, to your heart's content. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the deck right now. Uh, what this wants to play against? Control. This deck wants to play against control decks like it's no one's business. Uh, they will give you lots of time to set up, and if you resolve a grind clock, they're basically dead. I, I'm, I'm not exaggerating per se, but I'm maybe making it seem a little bit too simplistic. What I mean by that is, you set up your grind clock, say, on turn two. They're not really in business until you've already gotten four, five, even six charge counters on it. And so that, that basically means they have much less time to deal with your threats. You can go crazy on them. Um, <laughs> there are, however, a surprising number of cards that you don't want to come across. Oh, I might as well say this as well. You also like the Green Devotion match. You very much like that they don't have any direct damage, and they have big creatures that they spend all their mana on, all their ridiculous amount, excuse me, ridiculous amounts of mana, and then you just return them right back to the top of the deck or their hand or whatnot, you know. You, you're perfectly fine with those matches. Uh, tokens, to the extent that the token decks don't have burn, uh, which of course they will, you're also okay with. Rabble Master is a bit annoying, uh, but bear in mind, uh, 
if they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they, they won't fall for this more than once, though. Uh, Rabble Master isn't too, too, too much of a problem. You either spouts it back to the top, and you've just bought yourself a turn. That's all nice and wonderful. Uh, get too many tokens out, Blinding Spray is always going to do something. Um, yeah, so Icy Blast, even Icy Blast, that's, that's where Icy Blast shines, right? You, Icy Blast is bad against tokens, but okay, R Rabble Master. Rabble Master is a thing. Um, you do like mid-range, except you don't like the card Siege Rhino, because they will drain you whenever he hits the field, and he'll hit the field a lot if you keep using this type of fog effect. Uh, what you don't want to come across, the again, you don't want to come across that mono-red or red-green aggro deck that just comes down a little too quickly and has so much burn. Uh, that's definitely not a good one for you. If they want stuff in their graveyard, that's probably not good for you either. Um, especially, as I learned, <laughs> especially if they're running the card Dramoka. The card Dragonlord Dramoka wrecks this deck pretty much single-handedly. Um, as much as I like this standard for this type of deck, this strategy, the fact that it can even exist is beautiful in my opinion. The card Dragonlord Dramoka uh, <laughs> is, is really good at wrecking what we're trying to do here. And it's already going to be in people's main and or sideboards because it fights control so well and control is everywhere. So it's not like, oh, if this deck gets big, you're going to see more Dramokas. You're already going to see them if you're playing this deck. Uh, there's not much that you can do about that, especially if they're running Crucible or... Uh, is that, that it Crucible of the Spirit ha Dragon? Haven of the Spirit Dragon. If they're running those to try to, you know, get them back from the graveyard. At that point, really all that you can do is... See if you can resolve an Ugin and win that way. Or, wait, if you hold back your grind clocks to the very end, just keep putting charge counters until the very end, until you have enough to hit them out all at once. Um, and just hope that Dramoka's at the bottom. That's a really bad way to go about doing it, though, because <laughs> you, there's not much you can do in that match, I'm afraid. Uh, Stormtide's nice, but again, dragons have flying, and <laughs> Stormtide... If this, if this were a deck, if I had picked this deck up in Cons of Tarkir, so what would we not have here? Well, we wouldn't have Anticipate, and we wouldn't have Ugin. Uh, I would just have Grindclock and Stormtide Leviathan to win. And this deck, I think, would be much better. Even though the deck had, would have fewer tools at that time, you would have far fewer flyers. And therefore, you could afford running Stormtide in the main, and... It's just a slower format at that time. But now that we have Dragons of Tarkir, we just have to live with, with what we have. Um, yeah, that's my deck. As you can see, it's not exactly terribly expensive. As many, even though you want fetch lands to fuel your delve, you don't need them. You could just run all islands there. And so given that, the deck is actually fairly budget for standard right now. And I think, personally, I think it's a lot of fun. I, I very much like the reaction on my opponent's face when they realize what my win condition is. Um, I've, most of the time, you win your games off of Grind Clock. Next is Ugin. And then after that, if somehow we get to this stage in the game, I've done it only once. Only once. Drawing them out with Dictate. Uh, that is extremely difficult to do, especially since you yourself are doing a lot of draw. Uh, but that was against a control deck. So, they were doing a lot of it as well, and I was perfectly okay. Once I, once I saw what they were, what I was, they were just countering my win conditions and not doing much else. Once I saw that, I started playing Dictates so that they would draw first, and, um, <laughs> it was the silliest win. I so wish I'd gotten that on camera. Oh, oh well. Anyway. I think it's fun, I think it's rewarding, you'll get a great reaction, and you'll get the novelty of being able to play uh, a deck that has zero creatures in a format that is defined by its creatures. Well, I, a main deck with zero creatures. Alright, thank you very much for watching this, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it very much. And just to give you a little bit of a heads up, uh, there's going to probably be a lot less output when I start my job on Monday, uh, another job. So please bear with me. I apologize for the lowered productivity, but I'll upload as much as I can. 
in what time I have. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll show you something else later. Take care. Bye-bye.